We're drinking in the rain And eating in the rain What a glorious feeling We're happy again We're all in a crowd So deprived of A pine and some dots And pub grub that we love Stuffing chips in our face Along with some fried plates While with all the rain They're swimming on the plates Wolfing soggy food With a happy refrain And drinking and eating in the rain We drink lots of pints Of our favourite brew Then we put on our masks When we go to the loo That's a large for me head For a pint a pineapple that is and ahead. It's been heavily snowing, so let the stormy clouds chase COVID out of this place. Come on with the rain, I've a pint in my face. Be same again. I just can't refrain Cause we're drinking Just drinking in the rain We're drinking and drinking in the rain Cheers! Good evening. You're watching The Hughes at Ten with me, the gorgeous Hugh Edwards. Why? Because I'm worth it. <laughs> the Pope, the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Chief Rabbi were barred from entering a pub this week after the landlord thought they were taking the mickey. Right, before we start, do you want a Kotok? Oh, what? A cup of tea or coffee? No, no, I'm fine, thanks. Right, I'll ask them to start the DIR. The what? It's the digital interview recorder. Oh. Right, AC12 interview, present DSTJ and DCIKD. Right, DCIKD. I understand you've been investigating a CAID. A CAID? A CAID, yeah. C-A-I-D. It's an abbreviation for criminal activity in drugs. Really, DCIKD, do you not know your PAAAs? PAAAs? Police acronyms and abbreviations. Oh, right. No, sorry. See, I suffer from FOMA. FOMA? Fear of misusing acronyms. OMG. OMG? Oh, my God. How can you work in SCG and not know your PAAAs? SCG? Oh, right, yeah. Serious Crime Group. I always wondered what that meant. <laughs> Yeah, SCG. God, that explains a lot. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. What's going on here then? What's that an abbreviation for? Don't know that one. Do you know, sir? You don't know what L-O-L-O-L-O -L -O -L -O means? Do you know what? I've got no idea. Do you live in a skip? Is your life one long John Lewis nightmare? Then meet Carrie. She's just like you, only more snobby. Poor Carrie needs your help. She has to put up with living in one of the world's most prestigious addresses at taxpayers' expense, and found that she only had £30,000 to play with when turning their accommodation into the Shag Palace her and her man deserve. 
So while those lucky leaseholders in dangerous plastic clad buildings are stumping up cash for work that could save their lives, poor Carrie and her partner are struggling to fund the rest of the tens of thousands of pounds that they need. Carrie's partner is so poor, he dresses like Wurzel Gummidge. But you can help. If you're a Tory who fiddles your taxes, or if you can be bothered to pay out from your secret offshore account in Panama, then cough up now for Carrie. You could even be rewarded with a nice gong, or even a PPE contract just because you shared a pint in the pleb and pump with your local Conservative MP. So, text 0666 999 666 now, and in exchange for a small favour, nudge nudge wink wink say no more because you're dodging an inquiry, you can help people with terrible taste look down their noses at people like you and me, who can't even aspire to a roll of John Lewis wallpaper, let alone pay the rent. Thank you, you mugs. It's me, your anti-vax. Today, we've got some healthcare theme letters. Now, I know there are lots of problems with the NHS, like harvesting our DNA and vaccinating people against a fake virus, but they really do a good job. Besides, I'd rather the NHS collect my genetic data than one of those awful American health insurance companies. Go with what you know, that's my motto. So let's go to our first letter. Dear anti-vax. I have been hearing a lot about something called the NHS recently. Apparently it's failing, it's under pressure, but we should be clapping for them. Now who are the NHS and why should we be clapping for something that's failing, yours muddled in Middlesbrough? Oh, muddled? I'm not surprised you've heard of the NHS. It's been an integral part of British life for years. It stands for Neolithic Herpetology Society. In short, it's an ancient group dedicated to the preservation of our reptilian overlords, treating our human illnesses as a cover. We clap because those in charge, the reptiles who are benefiting from their services, tell us to. And because they refuse to raise the staff's wages. Uh, is that the head of the NHS? Yes, Farage here. Nigel Paul Farage. Nigel Farage. Former MEP, former broadcaster, former activist and former a party addict. F-A-R-A-G-E. As in Farage, yes. Right, yes, well, I'm out here at the English Channel. Why? Well, I'm helping you lot out, matey. Stopping the uh, South African and the Brazilian Covid variants from entering the United Kingdom. Now, as soon as we establish a uniquely British mutation in this virus, then we get the South Americans and the South Africans trying to muscle in on the action. So, I'm out here with my megaphone, shouting abuse at the various trade winds and airstreams to fix your poorly structured protection for the NHS. No, hang on a second. Go back home. I tell you, if we had my way, the only way a virus would get into the UK would be under a point-based system. Yeah, that's lovely. Right. What do you mean I don't know the first thing about virology? I'll have you know I'm an Aries. Well, there's no need for that attitude, Sonny Jim. Look, if you don't want my help, could I at least ask a question? What's the best cure for seasickness? Sorry? I, I don't understand. Did you just call me a Kent variant? He followed one around the world when greeting folk as one is always wont to do. He used to charm the locals with a handshake and then ask them, hey, What do you do? Then afterwards we'd pop into a quiet little country for a drink or two. And then he'd go and spoil it all by saying something stupid like Stay around here too long, you end up slitty-eyed. 
Firm did not approve when he first put the moves on me way back in 43. Although it caused them all to spare, one didn't care right then, it was all Greek to me. He's been with one so many years, it's safe to say that he was one's strength and stay. From preaching heads of state down to the plebs, they'd laugh at all the silly things he'd say. He just before one got through meeting all the plebs of fight to come away unscathed. Then he'd go and spoil it all by saying something stupid like, You're too fat to be an astronaut. But one love you. Do you still throw spears at each other? I miss you. This sounds like an Indian installed it. One thanks you. See you soon, sausage. <laughs> this is the front page of the Daily Mail on the 15th of March 2021. The Treason Show would like to apologise to viewers for appearing to be in agreement with the Daily Mail on this occasion and will try not to let it happen again. Oh, that's better. Usual Daily Mail standard. Oh, hello, children. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. Once upon a time, there was a voracious supermarket chain who gobbled up profits of its popular caterpillar cake called Colin. Everybody loved gobbling Colin until one day a rival supermarket chain, one that the snooty M&S chain looked down its noses at, came up with a similar caterpillar cake called Cuthbert. The M&S monster was angry and sued the creators of poor Cuthbert. And thus, the Caterpillar Cake Wars became a clumsy metaphor for how capitalism eats itself. Meanwhile, in his hut in the Cotswolds, former Prime Minister David Cameron looked upon the Colin the Caterpillar story and realised they had something in common. He too was a metaphor for capitalism eating itself. Once famed for his conjugation with a pig in his jolly old school days, Ding Dong Day realised all he had to do to fit the metaphor was to pop in on his old Bullingdon chum, Boris. Boris reminded Dave that he once called him a greasy piglet. <laughs> How they laughed as they both stuck their noses in the trough and then helped themselves to shares in Greensill and gave their punkawalla Rishi a nice tip. Then... Ding Dong Dave gobbled up coins from a very big bank. He swallowed whole a nice wad for lobbying his young friend Rishi. He guzzled expensive shampoo in boardrooms across the land and he got away with his offshore account in Panama. He lobbied and lobbied and lobbied until everyone around him felt sick. He greedily gobbled and sleazily lobbied until one day he realised that he too had turned into a shiny faced and greasy piglet. Just like his friend Boris. Then Ding Dong Dave retired to his very expensive shepherd's hut and fetched up a bunch of boring memoirs on how he screwed the entire country with his Brexit referendum. And just like the United Kingdom, we reached the end. Well, wasn't that sickening, children? But don't worry, with the existence of First Past the Post and with Keith Starmer leading the Labour Party, there'll be more tales of sleaze for years to come. Well done, Britain. You deserve it. Sleep well, children. Corollas cost me all my dough So now I'm pinning all my hopes On a post-corona spending boom Cause while my shop is shut All my debts are piling up If this doesn't change soon then I'm doomed Help me, help me, help me, Rishi, please Lend a helping hand before this breaks me While Corona spreads incessantly 
I'm hanging on so desperately for that post corona spending boom. Will it come in time? You're watching Fox News with me, Anne Anchor. News from across the pond, where the good people of England land have been rioting in protest at American ownership of their soccer ball clubs. For more on this, we now go over to our reporter on the spot, Chad Valet, who's in Manchestershire. Hi, Anne. You join me here at the Theatre of Dreams, now a theatre of nightmares for the Glazer family, who own this soccer ball club. Why's that, Chad? Well, the Manchestershire Devils, two-game series against their rivals, the Liverpool Birds, had to be abandoned due to a crowd infraction in the home team's end zone. At first, viewers watching on TV were horrified, especially fans of rival team Manchester Oil franchise, who were hoping to claim the Premier League pennant. Apparently, the rest of England's soccer ball community supports these rioters, Chad. That's right, Anne. There's a guy called Gary Neville, a former half quarterback for the Manchester Shear franchise. Apparently, he's been saying he agrees with all the protests. Well, not only him, and the anger is so widespread that supporters from the Norwich City franchise are also here, as you can see behind me. They've been offering their own six-finger protest to the American owners. Any comments from the Manchestershire coach, Ale Matador Sports Car? He said something, Anne, but I didn't understand a word. Is that because he was speaking in Norwegian? No, and he was speaking Northern. And what of the Liverpool Birds coach, Jägermeister Clippity Klopp? Uh, well, and he said, and I quote, he was so saddened he's turned his smile down to 11. And what about Liverpool Birds captain, Katie Price Henderson, Chad? Well, and there were reports that Henderson aimed a thinly disguised barb, which was last seen heading for the International Space Station. I'm sorry, Chad, but I'm finding all of this soccer ball talk very, very confusing. Now, what are American sports owners doing in such a crazy place such as England land? It's all to do with introducing good old American values to their quaint custom of fair play. And just like our good old NFL, they want to do away with all that pinko communist level playing fields nonsense and enjoy the American dream of screwing people for every penny they've got. And so this is really about reviving that amazing sounding European Super Soccer League, Chad? No, and that was all just a smokescreen to soften up the Brits for what's coming. A takeover of their National Health Service. Now it makes sense, sort of. Okay, thanks Chad. You've been watching Fox News. I've been an anchor. Good night. <laughs>
I must say you're looking particularly heroic today. Thanks, you. Now, uh, the controversy over having to take your tweet down, poking fun at the flag sh sharers. This has become news in itself. How do you respond to the suggestion that you were questioning the size of Robert Jenrick's flagpole? Well, you, you know what they say, that we're gorgeous. That too. And size doesn't matter. That's not what the ladies say. And we should know. Good night. They say that as well. This ship of state is all at sea. Corruption contracts, PPE. Welcome to Chermocracy. Blow me, Bullingdon boys, oh. Soon may the reckoning come. Once all the world beating's done. The chimes of doom have just been rung. Give Tories one big heave, oh. Twelve billion pounds for track and trace. But the dosh all went to the Tories, mates. Death toll higher than United States. The only thing world beating. Soon may an election come. Come, Keith and Co, they can all do one. Labour to the right of Genghis Khan, rename them more Blue Labour. Clap for heroes, they told you, but, but you can't, can't eat applause in an ICU. Nurses' pay rise is now due, make rich pay their taxes. Bozo, the election won, said he'd then get Brexit done. When the Scotland referendum's done, from the UK they will go. Oh, they lied about selling British Rail, British Gas and the Royal Mail. Our NHS is not for sale, it's a time for revolution. Soon may the reckoning come, once all the world beating's done. The chimes of doom has just been rung, give Tories one big heave ho. MP Zoom, they spout and brag. Interviews with a great big flag Braggards brag that makes us gag Refuge of the scoundrel Soon may the reckoning come Track and trace twelve billion Flog off and underfund Q privatisation Soon may the reckoning come Once all the world beating's done The chimes of doom have just been run Give Tories one big heave ho Soon may the reckoning come For whom toll bells have just been Wrong. Ask not for whom they told those bells they told for thee. Now, my dears, we do have one very special announcement before the break. Now, I know we said that this was a healthcare special, but this is breaking conspiracy news. We can tell you exclusively that the identity of the American truth teller QAnon is. <laughs> Darius, the world's biggest bunny rabbit, has been stolen from his home in Worcestershire. In other news, the world record was broken in nearby Birmingham for the largest ever rabbit pie. Oh, my old man's got COVID, he's got a hacking cough. We're all so sick of this virus, we wish it would just bog off. It came to us from China, it started in a lab. But it's science that will save us, so get your Covid jab. It keeps you tatting, it really gets on your chest. Don't want to catch it in Sainsbury's, or from a quarantine guest. Now you was just the type of girl to say me getting flu. They vaccinated me against the COVID too. Waiting outside in a long cold queue, watching incessant jabbing. I wish I'd put on a vest. Jab it, 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 jab Chris Witchy, well he ain't no slacker The wife thinks he's lovely like a king alpaca They go dilly or dally, that's cosy they tally Cos science is the only way to go I hope they've got the reins on that scrub back forest and have Oh no, messed up track and trace 
Brailsford's one-man show, Parody's Lost, will be at the Funky Fish Club Brighton on the 25th of June. Book at www.treasonshow.co.uk. Hey, 